the start. Start of the day fairly early, did a quick engine room check, then pull the anchor to head south. Our goal was to race the tide to make it through a rumored shallow water pass. Look at that beautiful sunrise. Gorgeous, just stunningly gorgeous. Husband, all of our sail out. Solo. Solo sailing. Great job, honey. All right, let's see what we can do. We're gonna try and come through Hog that key. hog cut key. Doesn't that look fun? Go ahead and drop it. Drop it. Did you untie it? Watch your foot. Watch. Get him back. Rebel. Rebel. Back So it looks like we're gonna go for it. These guys went and checked it out with the boat hook, and we're gonna leave the dinghy in the water as a precautionary measure. Uh, and we're gonna try and make it through here. But the tide is high, and you wanna go through at a high tide, so we cannot neutral, neutral. Um, waste any time. So here we go. Sketchy. All right, well, we just motored through hog key cut. It took a little bit of work. We timed the tide good, got there pretty much at dead high tide, slack. We launched the dinghy, ran through there with a, uh, a boat hook, and I just kind of like took soundings, checked the depth, and didn't see anything less than than six foot. So figured it'd be a good uh, a good idea to try it. And we went through there, and there was one spot where the bottom machine said it was like five and a half foot, and that's what we draw. So it was it was probably pretty close. We were probably inches away from the bottom I would I would guess but made it through that just saved us like 20 something miles because otherwise we'd have to go around all these other islands and then backtrack and I mean I wouldn't have done it if it looked like we were putting the boat at risk but it was pretty easy got through there relieved can kind of just sit back and relax and put the autopilot on and enjoy the sandbank
counted 35 starfish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at all the conch. See how many conch there are? Look at them, there's a whole crap ton of them. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Are we trolling? This is crazy looking. After hours of motoring, we ran through a minefield of buoyed fish traps. We did end up snagging one. Fortunately, it wasn't in our prop and it easily came undone. After an underwater check, I noticed an abundance of fish in the area, so we decided to hunt for dinner. What is that? My first hunk separate, or yeah. not, no, hunk fish. <laughs> you that right now because I really don't know but this is what it looks like there's a reef Oh, such strong. 
young men. Thank oh, God. Thank you. This is the shirt I want to be abandoned on an island with. Windrift, Annapolis, oh Maryland. God, I got it. I got it. Looks like it was a, it is a tartan, 30 footer, T A R, 30, built in 1976. Why was a nice little building this day? Such a bummer to see this. It's, it's really. It's always pretty sad when you see boats it like this. Me back when my 27 Newport sunk from the hurricane. Francis. Oh, Francis. Francis. God. Yeah. Wind drift. Probably was wind drifting. She was in condition. She just needs a little bit of fixing up all, and I can make the thing. Only our footprints. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Wow. No, it's just due to wear. It's a grotto, buddy. Ooh. A baby grotto. So this is my first attempt at making a blackening season for fish or anything really. So um, I did paprika, salt, black pepper, garlic powder. Um, I don't have onion powder, so I used minced onion and I did, um, I don't have dry mustard. So I just threw in just a little bit of curry. So whatever, maybe it's the same color. Um, and so I've coated, I've melted butter, I've coated, um, this is grouper, fresh grouper from yesterday that my son speared. And so I melted some butter, I twisted them around in butter, put them in here, and I'm kind of sprinkling it with the blackened seasoning. Obviously we're gonna do it on both sides. And I have the um, pan here heating up. So, uh, yeah, this is first time trying to do this. So, hopefully, it's gonna be good. And we've got the generator running because we're doing laundry. So, I'm excited because I got french fries at the market. And we're gonna put some french fries in the air fryer and have some blackened grouper. And I have some cucumbers and onions and some vinegar. I've been fermenting, which is really, really good. It's like a cucumber salad. So, that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Maybe slice up a fresh orange, and that's gonna be dinner. So, here we go. Okay, let's see what happens. Woo! Okay, I am finishing up the grouper, and it's really good. I pretty much just mixed everything together. I didn't do like whatever. The first batch was really spicy and the second batch was a little less spicy, but wow, it's really, really good. I'm actually really surprised, kind of. Um, but yeah, there it is. Why are you doing it? Bugs. Bugs. There's some serious mosquitoes over there and they found us out here. Us. It's a sexy sunset right there. This is the most mosquito infested, fish infested place I've ever been in my life. Lots of fish, but lots of mosquitoes. I've never experienced mosquitoes the way we've just mos experienced mosquitoes. And I've spent a lot of time in Louisiana in the swamp and why is that? Rebel was attacked by mosquitoes. They 
put him on his eyelid. Now he looks like this. Clarencetown, we noticed a bit of swell in the water, so we decided to load up the boards and look for some waves. We ended up stumbling onto this fun little right-hander, and we ended up making a new friend who joined us for a few waves. Not a fan, not a fan, not a fan. Please, I do not want to get washed ashore right now. I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> I don't want to lose my hat. I'm looking for a keyhole to this reef here. I know I saw one on Google Earth. Well, right now you're going over like a shallow reef. So, um, let's just go back to the boat do some research, make some food, and why are you going backwards? And come back. Yeah. There's rock right behind you, sticking out of the water. You boiling up right behind you. Please go forward and get us out of here. Please stall us out into the waves. I swear to God, babe. Please don't make me beg. Oh my god. That's it. You just hit the bottom of the dinghy. No, I didn't. That was uh, the foam fell. The what? The foam fell. Well, my husband put us into a dangerous position to try and find a keyhole through the reef with breaking swell all the way across it. 
to come over here and find Dean's great blue hole. Well, we found it. Made it in here by dinghy. Such a good captain, Captain Bly. We see that like, guy? We had six. See, he's back. And see? <laughs> six inches of water was enough to. This guy's way more dangerous. He'd make it over that reef. Definitely more of a good time, this one. I don't want to stay too long in case the tide's dropping. Back out. Let's go take a quick. second largest blue hole in the world. Its depth of 663 feet attracts free divers from all around and unfortunately has led to about 130 to 200 diving deaths in recent years. Beautiful place and definitely worth the stop. Beautiful setting, amazing cliffs. We had a really great time. Really glad we did it. I'm going to swim over the blue hole. Two new Patreons, Captain Jones and, and Michael McCarran. Bye!